I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again. He will lift up Jesus Delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye. Praise the Lord. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21. Today we have a difficult passage of Scripture. And it's good to be faithful to the Scriptures and not to explain away something that we know is quite difficult. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21. I'm reading to you from verse 20, chapter 21, verse 20. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of the Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the Lord. Here Paul, the apostle, was at Jerusalem. He came to see the leaders at the Jerusalem church. You find that in verse 18, the following day, the, and the day following, Paul went in with us unto James. And all the elders were present. The leadership in the Jerusalem church had been negligent of teaching the Jews who were born again that Circumcision does not contribute to salvation. And keeping the law, the law of Moses, has nothing to do with salvation. Clean meat, unclean meat, were they observed among the Jews, that those things were no more necessary. And whatever you eat does not add to your salvation or take away from your salvation. And they, they should have known that he is those leaders in Jerusalem. That this was the accusation against TV. That TV was teaching against all those customs of the Jews. And when the question came as to what he taught and what he said, he spoke to them very straight. Did it mean his words? And there wasn't any confusion about what TV was saying. Let's look at Acts chapter 6. Then there arose certain of the synagogues, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. He wasn't compromising with them. He wasn't agreeing with them. He wasn't an apostle. But he had knowledge. He had wisdom. And he had a non-conformist spirit telling them the truth about Christ as the only way, the way to salvation. In verse 11, Then the serpent men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stood up the people and the elders and the scribes. And they came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. And they set up false witnesses which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. You find there that they said he spoke against Moses and spoke against the law and spoke against this holy place, the temple. But we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs. That was the accusation against Stephen. The customs which Moses delivered us and all that such in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been, tell me, the face of an angel. 
out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And your heart also affects your face. There's the glory within him. And then you have the glow in his face. And he saw him and he said, This man is glowing like an angel. Look at chapter 7. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? They say you're speaking against the law. And against Moses. And against the temple. And against the customs of the Jews. Stephen, tell us, is this so? Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. And at that man, Stephen, he went from the very beginning of their history. And he went through all the Old Testament. And then he came on very strong. Verse 51. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and the murderers. He's talking about the crucifixion of Jesus. He didn't compromise with them. He told them straight. And as the boldness a child of God ought to have. A preacher of the gospel ought to have that kind of conviction and courage to declare the truth. After all, Paul had said, Bounds and afflictions await me in Jerusalem. But that doesn't matter. None of these things move me. And since he had said that, he should have corrected the error in the Jerusalem church. And you know that that Jerusalem church is nowhere to be found today. And it's only what Paul the Apostle did. What he emphasized to the Gentile world at that time that remains today. If you don't correct the error that's in the church. And we are afraid of the elders in Jerusalem. Afraid of the key people, untouchable people in Jerusalem, and the people that call the shots in Jerusalem. And Paul could not tell them, Brethren, James, what are you telling me? You're telling me that this, this, and this isn't Christ sufficient? Is it not the same way of salvation for the Jews and for the Gentiles? He says, different path to salvation for the Jews and for the Gentiles. Are you saying that the Jews have permission to do this and to continue in their customs? The Gentiles have customs too. They repent of those customs. And the Gentiles have their laws too. They repent of those laws. And if it's the same grace working among the Gentiles, that same grace should make those Jews to conform to the totality of the gospel. And then it goes on in verse, in verse 52. It says, Which of the prophets have you not, have not your fathers persecuted? Then look at verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of the angels and have not kept it? Then when they heard these things, they were caught to the heart and they latched on him with their teeth. But he being full of the Holy Ghost, I pray you'll be full of the Holy Ghost. You know, when you're full of the Holy Ghost and the fire burning within, there's the conviction that the Holy Ghost plants in your heart. There's a sound doctrine, unadulterated doctrine, uncompromising style that you have for that doctrine to you anywhere you find yourself. In Jerusalem of Ephesus or among the Jews or among the Gentiles. And so we're told that he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly unto heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on, his, on the right hand of God. Then he cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid their clothes at a young man's feet. Tell me the rest. Who is that? That's Paul. Before he was converted, he saw Stephen taking his stand. 
when those Jewish people said, he's speaking against the law and against the customs of the Jews and against the temple and against Moses in particular. And then Timmy took his stand and they stoned him. And the people that stoned him, they left their garments in the hands of Saul. And they stoned Stephen in verse 59, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. We're coming now to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21. And we're reading now from verse 20 again. Now Paul came to the same situation where Stephen had found himself. The same accusation they leveled against Stephen, now they leveled against him. But in this case now, it wasn't the unconverted Jews that leveled that accusation against him. It was James, one of the leaders in the Jerusalem church, that they had not done their work. They had not taught their own people, the converts in Jerusalem, the thousands of them, that all these things do not contribute to salvation. They just left them, they left that side, and they emphasized Jesus can save, and Jesus can heal, and Jesus is a sanctifier. But they left all those things that they should have corrected. And how to cover up their own kind of error, their own corruption, their own negligence. James now said in verse 20, And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Now see us, brother, how many thousands of the Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Contradiction. If they believe the gospel, they drop the law of Moses. The old covenant is abolished. It's taken out of the way. It's annulled. Take it out of the way. And don't say they're still zealous of the law. They should not be. If they are converted. And since you say they're believers. And they're in their thousands. And they're looking up to you as a teacher. As the apostles. As the leaders. Then you teach them the truth and tell them those things do not matter. Verse 21. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, of course. Saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, of course. Not for salvation. Not for eternal life. It's part of the old covenant. The old covenant is gone. And circumcision means nothing. When you regard it according to the word of the Lord, regard it to salvation, neither to walk after the customs. Of course. That's what we're saying. And that's what Paul the apostle had been teaching. He taught the same gospel everywhere to the Jews and to the Gentiles. He taught the same doctrine everywhere. To those who are wise and to those who are barbarians, to the Greeks and the Gentiles. I didn't say what is it there for. The multitude must needs come together. For they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this. That we say to thee. You know sometimes the danger is there when you have been taught the word of God. And you have the conviction according to the word of God. And if somebody you regard as an elder... Somebody you regard as a senior, somebody you regard as an apostle, a great man of God, now counsels you. And he says to avoid trouble. And you'll see that Paul did not avoid trouble eventually. And to avoid what the Jewish people will say. And we have quoted to the Jews, I become as a Jew, and to the Gentiles, I become as a Gentile, that I might save them which are among the Gentiles. In this case, the Jews were not saved. By the stage that Paul took eventually. God was not in base. We need to understand that. And what you need to understand the scripture is that God is faithful. His words are recorded faithfully. In fact, the writer of the Acts of the Apostles is Luke. And Luke was a companion of Paul the Apostle. And Luke did not cover up this mistake of Paul. He didn't cover it up. 
And it's simply we need to be faithful to the word of God. If the companion of Paul, the apostle, did not cover it up, those of us who are into preaching, who are preaching, we should not cover it up either. It wasn't something right that Paul, the apostle, did at this time. Do you remember that when Peter himself, when he did something wrong in Galatians chapter 2, a great leader, Paul, the apostle, confronted him. If Paul, the apostle, confronted Peter when he was wrong, then we also ought to confront Paul when he's wrong. And we don't, we don't cover up anything and misinterpret and, you know, interpret it this way and this way, adjust it a little bit so that everybody will feel nice about Paul. No, we don't feel nice about Paul in this chapter. He didn't do well in this chapter. We have to set that straight. And so we read on. We're looking at it now from verse 22. What is it there for? The multitudes must needs come together. For they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that will say to thee, We have four men which have a vow on them. James, which vow are we talking about again? I thought that Christ paid it all. And that there's no other vow of the Old Testament that comes into the New Testament. And there's no other vow in any other chapter except in this chapter where James was saying, This is what these four men have on them. In verse 24, take them, then take, then take, and purify thyself with them. Which purification again? I thought the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, purifies, sanctifies, and cleanses us from all sin. Which other purification are we going for? Which other cleansing? Is it water? Is it a Jewish sacrifice? Is it a Jewish ceremony that is going to cleanse us again? What's James saying? And what's James telling Paul the Apostle that will purify yourself of them that they may shave their heads? I'm sure you understand now when you look at the details of what Paul was told to do. This wasn't something that Paul should have done. It's only because it was coming from James. Let me ask you, if this came from Timothy, and Timothy said unto Paul, Paul, my mentor, my leader, master, apostle, why don't you do this? Paul would have rebuked him. If Titus had said so unto Paul, Paul would not have agreed, but because it was a senior apostle, somebody that knew the Lord before him, an apostle at the headquarters church in Jerusalem that said, do this, shave your head with them, that and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing. They want to kill the man. They're killing his ministry. That everybody that sees you here, everybody see you that you take a vow with all these Jews here, and you shave your head, when they see you, they say, aha, it's one of us. Everything you have preached, everything you have said, they would know that it is nothing. You don't want that. You don't want to take any step or do anything. That anybody that sees you with some other people will say, everything they ever heard you preach was nothing. But that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. As touching the Gentiles, which believe, we are preaching. And concluded that they observe no such things. 